Hello, Ipswich. Uh, my name is Bill Hart. I'm the superintendent of schools. Uh, thank you for tuning in on Dialogue with Dr. Hart. Um, today, we're taking another look at a, a topic that we looked at earlier this year, which is uh, a program at the high school that focuses on sustainability. And sustainability is, is our effort as citizens to make sure that we respect and support our environment. Uh, when we spoke earlier, and I have um, uh, teacher Lori LaFrance here today, and she was with us a little bit earlier, talking about uh, this program uh, about sustainability. And we had a group of students that were going to be going on a trip to Costa Rica for an international conference on sustainability focused on students, so it was students from around the world. And so I have Laurie here because now the students and our teachers have gone on that trip. Uh, and I understand, Laurie, it was a very exciting trip, right? It, it certainly was. Yeah. Yes, exceeds yeah. our expectations. Did, oh, great. Did. Did, tell us a little bit about the trip. Well, we were able to tour the country and view all the initiatives that Costa Rica is doing for sustainability efforts. And then we were able to go to the Global Student Leadership Conference during the last part of the trip and meet with 500 other people from all over the world who are like-minded and who um, were sharing our ideas with us. It was great. Now tell me a little bit because when I heard that Costa Rica was one of the um, uh, leaders in the world around sustainability uh, yes. projects. I have to say it was a little bit of a surprise to me that mm -hmm. Costa Rica would be uh, on the cutting edge of, of this type of work. What were some of the things that, that you saw that, that um, really puts Costa Rica at the center of this, this uh, movement, I guess you'd call it? Sure, well we saw the people really engaged and um, appreciating the surroundings that they have. The country is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and they understand that they want to preserve that, and they know that tourism will boost their economy, and tourism is only going to happen if their environment is stable. And so they have a, a big incentive to be sustainable and to maintain their rainforests and their, their canals, their beachfronts, so that the tourism will come and, um, and they're trying to also balance that, balance the tourism with the environment too. But they're doing a good job. Yeah, that was kind of an interesting, um, this, this combination of philosophy and, and being kind of pragmatic about right. uh, their environment too. Uh, good, well, so when you think back on the trip itself, was, was there a particular highlight that was a time that you'd, you'd say, wow, this, this is something I'll never forget um, as a teacher, but maybe even as a person, too. Yes, th there were actually quite a few yeah, highlights, yeah, yeah, so it's a little bit mm -hmm. difficult. Um, when we were at the leadership conference, just watching our students engage with international students yeah. and, um, and solve the challenges that they were given, they were taught how to do design thinking which is a process that, for example, Google uses okay. in their design process. Yeah. And they were able to actually implement that with people that they didn't know previous to this and come up with some phenomenal ideas. And I'm really excited about them bringing that back yeah. Yeah. into the classroom. I can't wait to start with them and uh, see how that goes. Well, that's, that, could you tell me just a little bit more? Because, because a lot of times, you know, the, the viewing public, may not know when we say design thinking. So yes. what, what does that mean? And I guess what does it mean for students in this particular program, but, but students as a learner and students sure. as a lifelong learner? Yes, yeah. and I can yeah. say I learned a lot myself also, not just the students. Sure, yeah. um, the, it's a process, a way of looking at things, a way of thinking um, so that they identify a problem, they equate that problem with an individual who might have an issue that needs to be solved, and then putting themselves in the individual shoes, they try to come up with the best solution for that problem and then think about how they're going to implement that, actually implement it, mm -hmm. and then um, be able to describe that to the public in a way that um, is positive. Yeah. Well, you know, I've heard a lot from you and from Dave Dalton, um, the high school principal, mm -hmm. that this was really 
a, a transformative experience yes. for everybody involved. Yes. You know, so uh, I love the, the the talk about, you know, we collectively were different at the end of this experience than yes. when we entered the experience. I know that's hard to capture, but 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 maybe you well, could help us uh, <laughs> understand why that was the case. I had several of the students that went with us to Costa Rica come back to me and and say that it has changed their lives and I know that sounds corny but they truly meant it it has changed not only the way they're going to look at academics and um, career paths and so forth with design thinking but it's also changed their international view you know they had um, they had their Ipswich view yeah. before this yeah. and yeah. now they have much more of a world view. They understand perspectives of different cultures, different people coming from, like I said, all over the world that they met. And um, they are able to, to kind of put themselves in other people's shoes, as, as we had said, and see where before they might have um, been judgmental towards right. them. Yeah. They can see why people act the way they do, especially environmentally, sustainability-wise. And, um, and understand a lot better than yeah. they would have before. That's such a key component, I think, because mm -hmm. we, a lot of us read books like The World is Flat and, mm -hmm. and how technology and, uh, has, has given us access to really uh, the globe in ways that we've never had that type of access uh, right. before. And that really is a game changer uh, mm -hmm. for us as individuals, for our, uh, our country, um, but, and it's something that I think, this is a great launching period. You know, one of my previous positions, we actually put together trips for teachers and mm -hmm. educators to go to, uh, my particular situation was to China. <laughs> because we as educators have to be in that mindset too, yes. of what the world is like today, and we may not have to deal with it as, as directly as our students will, but it's very much going to be part of their lives, both personally and professionally. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point. I guess the, the final piece I'd, I'd um, like to ask you is, as you went through this and reflecting on it, did it change the way you may uh, look at teaching? Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. Um, I've already implemented some of the ideas that I yeah. learned in yeah. a conference and um, had some great positive, um, yeah, it was, I it's been really, yeah. yeah, it's been really good. Um, so my current students are really enjoying the way that I'm running the classroom now and trying to take those things that I learned from the conference. Yeah. Um, the future students, especially the 12 that went on the trip, already understand this, so we're actually going to be able to even push those boundaries farther in September. Yeah. I've also made connections with teachers from Costa Rica and we plan on doing group projects through Skype um, with those teachers oh, and yeah. with those yeah. other yeah. classrooms. Yeah. And we've also made connections with an elementary school there yeah. and, um, and plan on keeping in contact with them too. So oh, yes, it will definitely change the way I teach. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah. I you know, I wasn't thinking about this, but but now as you're talking, I, I think it's important for the community to see the connections here um, with this type of uh, program and trip and course is just one manifestation of an overall um, district uh, vision and philosophy. So the, yes. the work around 21st century skills mm -hmm. where you'd say students really we have to help them build their thinking skills and their communication skills and their collaboration skills and to be persistent and mm -hmm. to be self-managed, all of which are part of our um, successful habits of mind. Right. And then our focus on powerful learning mm -hmm. and that it is in engaging and yes. that it's participatory <laughs> and it's, it, you need to connect it to the individual. Um, I told you that the last question was the last question, but I'm, I'm going to say, okay. so <laughs> sure. could you speak just a little bit to um, how you as an individual teacher may have made some of those connections? Sure. Well, seeing the kids interact with other kids, 
was just amazing. So the communication that you're talking about. And we're not only talking about the English speakers, but we're also talking about Spanish-speaking people and having um, them take their Spanish skills <laughs> up a oh, level yeah. also, which I, I hadn't thought would happen, but it, it, it yeah. did. And so that, that communication on the everyday level, but also on, during the conference, on important you know, topics that, that yeah. they were conversing on. So definitely the communication yeah. was, um, was key. And as you talk about those 21st century skills, are so important for them to learn on these careers that we're not even sure what what careers they're going to be going right. into That's yet if they point. don't exist yet but um, that they will be prepared because they will have this foundation these interpersonal skills the intrapersonal skills mm -hmm. and being able to communicate successfully is so such yeah. a yeah. big part of it yeah yeah well thank you thank I want to take this opportunity Laura to thank you um, because this type of program doesn't happen without very dedicated teachers that are willing to spend the time and effort um, on putting it together. Yes, you travel to Costa Rica, but you traveled to Costa Rica with a group of students. Um, you know, it wasn't a vacation, uh, even though I know it was a, a wonderful experience. So just want to thank you for all the time and effort that you've put in up at, to this point. Um. And, you know, this is all part of a course that will yes. continue all next year. So I am looking forward to seeing well, I'm all that play out. I'm looking forward to it too and um, it, it's been my pleasure and I wanted to thank you too for having faith in me to do this and for um, for actually bringing this vision to the district because it has proven to be um, very important and really effective not only for these 12 kids but for the classrooms that these kids are influencing now and for the whole community when they'll be making a big difference sustainability wise in Ipswich next year. Oh, great. So thank well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks again. Right. Yeah. Thank you. The next seg segment of the, the show, we're going to talk to the uh, three of the students, of the 12 students that traveled to Costa Rica. Um, these students went through a pretty rigorous process to, to be selected for, for this uh, project. And uh, I'm very proud and pleased to be able to share their good thinking and their good work uh, with the Ipswich community.
have three young ladies here that were part of our Costa Rica trip. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and then I have a series of questions and uh, just to talk a little bit about the trip and uh, the impact it had on them, and hopefully the impact that they will have on on Ipswich. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, yeah, uh, can we just go through and let's just uh, uh, name what grade you're in. Uh, I think that should be enough for now. Okay, um, my name is Claire Warner and I'm a sophomore at Ipswich High School. Um, my name is Deirdre O'Flynn and I'm a freshman at Ipswich High School. My name is Charlotte Howe and I'm a sophomore at Ipswich High School. Great, thanks. Um, so I want to take a broad question. <clears throat> the trip itself and the course you'll participate in next year uh, is centers around this, this concept of sustainability, right? So could you help the, the uh, community, because not, not everybody may not know what sustainability is, why it would be important, and maybe why it would be important for Ipswich. So if you have any thoughts on any of those topics, I'd, I'd be glad to hear what you have to say. Um, well, sustainability is like not using as many resources or like not using things so wastefully so that it doesn't impact the planet as much. Like when we were in Costa Rica, they used the term like, like make your carbon footprint like less yeah. and things like that um, to like help better the environment and people and stuff around you. Great. Um, I believe like sustainability is about reducing, reusing and recycling, just like the saying, you know, um, like we just need to reduce what we use and what we do use, we need to recycle. And it's important to reuse the things that we are using, like plastic bottles and it, all those things that can affect the environment in a bad way. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be spreading. I, I live in Newburyport, and just recently, Newburyport put in an ordinance where they, nobody can use plastic bags anymore. Yeah. So no matter where you go, you have to have your little canvas bag with you um, to, to bring whatever you're buying home. So th mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting, a pretty bold move um, on New Breakport's part. But yes, cool. Um, I think sustainability is really important at Switch because it's important that we do our part as a town. And if we, if, if we can start it here, then maybe it can spread to other places. Cause yeah. It's such, I mean, Ipswich is such a beautiful place. I know all of you guys have grown up here, but for somebody uh, who's relatively new, it's, it's just, um, that it's such a beautiful place and, and Ipswich has been so good about keeping open spaces and, and recognizing the value of, of um, uh, what, they, what they have here as far as environmentally, so good. So, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the, the, the trip. Um, can you guys, but before that, can you share with the community a little bit of the process you had to go through? Because it was a pretty rigorous process to go through to get selected for this trip. Um, tell us a little bit about that and maybe a little short piece on what your your proposed project was all about. Um, so the first step for us was we had to write an essay, uh, an essay about our project and what we like and what we would do to make Ipswich a more sustainable town. Yeah. And we submitted it to the, the judges, which was um, Mrs. LaFrance and Mr. Dalton, I think. And then if you got selected from that, you would move forward and you had to present in front of a panel of judges. Yeah. And there was an audience that was pretty scary. I, I bet I, I was in that audience. Yeah, yeah it, it, you guys all did a fabulous job. But yeah, yeah, it's 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 tough to get up in front of people like that. Yeah, anybody? It, it, the, a little bit more about the process. Um, or how it impacted well, you? Well, after we got selected through our essays, we like had to obviously present, like Claire said, and um, a lot of people like made a PowerPoint and had like notes and stuff to read off. And you just like presented your projects and like while you're doing it, like I felt like mine was really cool. And then like right after I did it, I was just like, oh, I don't know if it's that good. And there was just so many like, good competitors going for the 12 spots to Costa Rica. And there was like 17 of us that were presenting. Well, I, I remember your project. If I, now let's see if how, how good my memory was. Was it about um, uh, invasive plants and you were going to use livestock to, to um, take care of the, the invasive plants? That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, t tell us a little bit about that. I thought it was really an interesting way of looking at things. Yeah, well, so um, it was just, it was invasive plants, but specifically it was mostly Phragmites. Yes. 
and um, livestock such as goats and cattle, but goats more because they're like lighter and less, like they need less, like, and they produce less waste and stuff. Um, so Phragmites are like an uh, invasive breed and they can grow really tall and they have like a lot of seeds and they take over like high parts of marshes. Mm -hmm. um, and they just like displace like water and salinity is like messed up. Yeah. And you could like the goats will eat them, yeah. eat them. <laughs> and if um, if you like put the goats in the spot, they'll eat them all. And then you could like move them around. And they start growing back. You can put the goats back there. So like because their roots are really strong. So when the goats eat them the first time, they usually come back, and then you have to like kill them again. And a lot of people try to use like lawn mowers and like pesticides and herbicides or whatever to yeah. kill them but it's not very good for the other plants around them mm -hmm. and a lot of places like in a salt marsh you can't use those things so yeah. i just thought it was a smart idea yeah i did too i read yeah i thought it was great um well let's let's shift to the trip itself because you all participated in this trip to costa rica um could you tell me a little bit about the highlights of the trip both both um, the trip itself, but then highlights of the conference? Um, one of the best parts, I think there was like a ton of amazing stuff and we learned so much. And um, But one of the I think the best part was this elementary school we went to on the first day. Right. And um, we got to play with the kids there and they didn't speak any English at all. Right. And I know I took French at school, so I didn't really speak English, but I mean, speak Spanish, <laughs> sorry, I speak English. <laughs> um, but um, it was amazing that you were able to communicate th with them even though like you, there was that language barrier there. Yeah. And the other amazing thing was how like, even though they didn't have very much, you could tell they were just so happy with what they did have and they really cared about the environment too, you could tell, so yeah. it's pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah the, the school was really awesome. I played soccer for like two hours with the kids and they're all like, five to like 12 or whatever, and they're way better than me. And I'm just like, how are you so good at soccer? Um, and uh, it was just like really cool because they'd like sort of, we kind of like made hand gesture things and like yelled at each other in languages. Like I take Spanish, so I kind of understood them, but not that much. Mm -hmm. um, and they, we would just like find ways to communicate like other than language and like with like with like verbal, but not like language. I don't yeah. know, it's like. It's, it's amazing uh, that that um, that can happen, where you're using hand, so you're showing or you're pointing, or, mm -hmm. you know, it, yeah. and, and, and you can make those connections, yeah. Hi highlight, what was a highlight? Um, well, basically the whole trip was <laughs> a highlight, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to admit. I've heard that. Yeah, um, the whole thing was amazing. Um, but my favorite thing about going there was just like to hear their philosophy on just um, just how much they love Costa Rica and how they want to preserve its beauty yeah. and how they preserve it is by being sustainable yeah. Yeah. Um, by reducing what they're using and like and how they're trying to become carbon neutral by I don't remember the year but yeah. it was very close. I remember maybe it was like 2020, okay. but which is amazing. It's right around the, the fact corner. that they think that they can become carbon neutral by that time. Wow. Um, I for love people, for people who don't know, because it, uh, what does carbon neutral mean? Um, it means the amount of carbon that they are putting into the air um, that would be able to, like, by like plants yes. and yeah animals be like soaked back up so the amount that they're producing it's also being used back so they're really not creating any like going into the atmosphere in the yeah. end which I just I loved hearing about that I think that would be like amazing if if one country can do it why can't we all you right. know R really a can-do attitude huh? yeah it's, yeah we, we can get this done yeah. so the conference Con tell us a little bit about the conference you know what what was it like uh, what the pro, you know, some of the activities they had you involved in, what made it unique or, or interesting or different? Um, the first word I would probably use was overwhelming when we first got there, you know, because we were thrown in with all these people that we hadn't known before. Some of them didn't, like, uh, English was their second language. Hmm. Um, 
but we got this big project too and you had to like break it down and use the design thinking process that Mrs. LaFrance talked about and figure out like a solution to it which was really cool because it showed you that like you could like solve anything if you just sat down and you worked it out and worked it through so that was really cool. Well that whole design thinking piece, it, have you seen after that exposure to that <coughs> process, it, have you found yourself thinking about that in other aspects of your life? Yeah. Tell like, me about that. Um, I just like, ever since I came back, I've been thinking about like everything that I do in a totally different way. Yeah. Um, like I found it so much easier to solve problems um, in school and out of school. Um, like if if I have a if there's like something, if I'm a, in a project at school, and it doesn't even have to be in a like science class, it could be any class, I, I'm able to like figure out the problem and ideate and just come up with a solution, which I've never been able to really do that before until this trip. And so that's made a huge impact on my school life, which I'm really happy about, which I just think that's really awesome that I was able to learn that in just this like short conference. Yeah. Well, let, let me, let's stick with this for, for, for a minute because I think it's important going back to what we're trying to do as a whole district is, you know, there's a lot of thinking and research out there about, you know, teaching um, uh, the education process and that we used to focus just on, on whatever the content was, that your math and your science and your social studies and here's all the important things that you need to know about it and give it back to us on a test. But now it's, it, we're trying to shift to, you know, the thinking process is just as important as that or maybe even more important. Mm -hmm. Your ability to communicate is just as important as your content or maybe even more important so uh, that you can collaborate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with other people. Can you guys tell me a little bit about what y y your thoughts on that? Uh, are we heading in the right direction? Um, well, I really love that. That's what we're focusing on. In a, in a lot of times in school, I feel like we're just doing memorization, yeah. which is not the best because you're not really learning anything from that. But if we focus on um, the like figuring out problems, I think that's something that we will be able to use in the future, you know, in our jobs that we have when we're, in, we're adults. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's very important that we're teaching that at our school. Good. And like creativity should definitely be something that's valued because that's what we're going to need in the future for those jobs. Yeah. Well, the, the, did you find creativity part of your whole problem solving? And, oh, yeah. And, yeah. Right. Tell me a, a little bit about that because a lot of times people think creativity is, is um, set aside for people who do landscape painting or something. Mm -hmm. and, and that certainly is part of it. But, but how, do, how do we look at creativity as being a practical skill. Like, this is an important skill for people to know. Like, if you're creative, you have a lot more openness and you're able to solve problems more easily and with more, like, better ideas. <laughs> um, yeah. um, like, when people who are creative tend to be more successful in like their life because they can solve problems more readily that are like to a people who aren't as creative are kind of just faced with like a wall and they're just like, oh, well, I don't really know what to do now. And a creative person would find a way to go around the wall. Excellent. Great, great, great example. Yeah. A anything else on, on that piece? All right. So I think we must be getting close. So I'm going to ask you guys to talk a little bit. So now you're back at school. You're going to be part of a course next year um, focused on sustainability. So. Um, well, I guess one of the things, what are, you, what are your thoughts around that? Um, what are you excited about? What are you looking forward to? Um, well, I did my project on seafood sustainability, and so next year I'm going to try to like expand on that. And one of the really cool things was that at the conference I met this, well, there was this woman who was talking who, who lived in Costa Rica, and she did, um, her job was to try to work with fishermen to see if they could make like their seafood and their fishing more sustainable to our ocean. Okay. So that like inspired me a lot and I'm going to take those ideas that she gave me back um, next year for the course so I can expand on that. Great, great. Uh, how about you, you um, girls? Well, for my project, I focused on like reducing <coughs> and so 
what I decided to do for my project was um, to try to convince people to change the font that they're using when they're typing up documents on their computer. And um, I figured out that if you use this font, it's called Garamond. Um, it re reduces the amount of ink you're using by 20%, which is okay. like a huge reduction. Yeah. And um, so when I was first coming up with this idea, um, I was like, oh, I don't really know how to get people to um, like agree with me and um, be able to actually use this in their life. Mm. But um, after the conference, because of all the I, like stuff that I've learned, yeah, yeah. Um, I really, I've come back and I'm like, I have a new attitude about it. And I really believe that I can, during this class, figure out how to get people to reduce the amount of ink they're using when they're typing and I just have like a, I just have a whole new like way of thinking about it, yeah. which is it's really cool to me. I don't know the fact yeah. that I can I feel that way now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's exciting. It, again, this whole can do mm -hmm. um, piece that you know, and it's going to take persistence on everybody's part mm -hmm. because um, you know to try to convince people to change their their practices is, is always a difficult thing to yeah. do. I, but I but I think it was so. Uh, it's, really interesting projects each one of you had. Uh, the, the project of how, how practical is that? You know, yeah. cutting down on ink, ink by 20% just by changing your fonts. Yeah. And so I, I'm sure that changes, you know, the whole, the, um, the, as you're trying to dispose of the ink cartridges mm -hmm. and all of that residual impact on, on the environment, et cetera, mm -hmm. was something that people are using every single day. Yeah. Uh, and it really doesn't change yeah. what they do, but it has a big impact. Yeah, that's great. Um, all right, so I guess I'm going to give you a, an opportunity to just have some wrap-up thoughts, uh, either about the trip, about next year, maybe about education as a whole. Uh, if you want to use this opportunity to give me any advice as, <laughs> as your superintendent, I'm absolutely here, willing and anxious to uh, hear your thoughts. So yeah, any wrap-up thoughts? Um, well, doing the more hands-on things in classrooms other than just like writing or listening to someone speak is a lot more helpful to the students and it like makes them remember stuff better and understand it more clearly because they have done it themselves and not just watch somebody else do it. Yeah. So that's like a really smart implement in the education. Yeah, thank you. Well, I believe that the world is like always changing and I'm very proud of our school because I feel like along with how the world is changing, we are also changing with it. And we've and in school we have kind of we're we're on this um way to um change over from just the memorization to really focusing on how to solve different problems yeah. in like during when we have projects and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um so I think that's really just like one of the main things that I'm getting out of this is that we're really focusing more on like the future instead of just like learning how to learn in school. I feel like yeah. that's what we do a lot. But I'm really take I'm really getting um things that I will use in the future out of school, which I just that's really yeah yeah what I feel. Oh. That Thank you, yeah. Um, I agree with what Charlo was saying, that I think it's really great that our school like is keeping up with the environmental, like the envir like how important environment is. And um, I feel like the, this conference and the trip has like, given me confidence like that I can take a leadership position in this like issue of sustainability in our town. And I really think we can make a difference. Well, you know what? I, I, I want to wrap up with that, because I, I've been in education now for 30 years. and and. I've always thought how important it was um, to have students take leadership roles. Uh, important for them, but important for the school or the, for the district. And in this particular case, for, for the community. I was just at a meeting uh, Saturday, uh, a school meeting, where they were talking about uh, a sustainability issue. It was some, somebody else's, uh, it might have been part of yours too, the green crab uh, problem. Okay. That, yeah. Uh, and, and that the community sees that as a significant problem. And, and I took that opportunity to say, you know what? We have students 
that see that as a problem and at taking the lead in, in, in that. And so I can see the, that type of collaboration between our student leaders and, and the town. And so I want to thank you for taking the time to put your, your presentation together with, because I know that you're all very um, hardworking students outside of this and to put that, uh, add that to your list to, to be part of this competition. Um, you all have really interesting uh, projects that, that you've identified and you, you're willing to take a leadership role. And so I want to say to the Ipswich community, you saw these three uh, young leaders here first. So uh, five, six years from now when they're out in the community and they're making a name for themselves, uh, you, you can come back to this show and say, wow, these students, we, we saw them when they were still in high school and while they were in high school, they were uh, changing the community. So you guys are doing great work. Thanks so much for, for coming on the show. And uh, I, I look forward to next year and just seeing where you go with all this great work. So thank you. Mm -hmm. And Ipswich, I want to thank you again for tuning in.